So yes, guys, this is for your concern that I have started recording of, of this particular session. So guys, let me set the context for you that uh, what we are going to discuss within this particular batch, what we are going to discuss, what we will cover and all. So that kind of things we are going to discuss here. Guys, please do let me know once you are able to see my screen. Yes, sir, you are responding. Yeah, yes, sir. Great. Good to know. So, so guys, uh, when we are going to talk about this particular session, what we will cover and what we will discuss. So the particular agenda here is to be DevOps. Let me define here. And guys, please mute yourself if you are not speaking. That will really help. Thank you. OK, so right now, guys, we are talking about DevOps. Is there anyone who can, who can help me? What is DevOps? Yes, guys, what is DevOps? Development plus operation. OK, and why do we need only single person doing development and operation? To integrate both the teams. But when we have a single person as dev plus operation, so why do we know why do we need two different teams? Guys, let us have a little discussion on this particular word first before I go and start explaining all these things. Just want to know your inputs. Yes, guys. Yeah, DevOps team uh, is a bridge between uh, development team and operations team. So, engineer, this DevOps engineer can handle both uh, teams. Okay. So, Kumar, let me uh, let me ask you one more thing. What is the use of this bridge? Like, at what particular point in time this bridge is being used? Yeah. Uh, for CI/CD uh, things like. Uh, you want to uh, make okay can you tell me can you explain like any real world scenario where this bridge is required yeah for example uh, the development team uh, develops a code in the dev environment uh, in the operations team if they want to deploy in any uh, production servers if there is any uh, mishap and occurs like uh, the development team uh, developed in one environment uh, with uh, lower versions in the operations production servers have higher versions so there may be a, a mishap and occurs. So there, uh, DevOps engineer will come into picture and uh, uh, yeah, he will involve in all the meetings for the development team and operations team. So that he, he will have uh, overall idea. So he's a contact, contact of a client, contact person for both teams. Okay, great. Any other one who has some different view about it? Anyone? Grace, any idea about it? No idea, sir. Okay, Govind Raj? Not much, sir. What's, what's the question? I just joined in. Okay. So the question here is why DevOps is required and what is DevOps? Uh, DevOps is a set of practice that uh, combines software development and IT operations. Its aim is to shorten the system development life cycle and provide continuous delivery and high software quality. DevOps is also characterized by operation staff and developer participating together in their entire service life cycle for designing through development process and production support. Okay, very good and interesting as well. So let me give you a real, real world scenario where DevOps is required. So let us say there is a particular program or let us say a particular service which is developed by some developer, right? Now the developer has handed over the source code to operation guys that take this particular code. These are a couple of commands which you can execute you will have a jar file at this location. This jar file is supposed to run in this particular manner. 
the particular person who is known as operation team or you can call that tech ops or maybe sre site reliability engineering team the team tried to execute commands but they did not get successful result the build is not getting success that is failing on production environment now they will write an email back to developer that these particular commands are not working reason being build is not successful developer will execute the same command within lower environment obviously we are going to discuss about what are these lower environments why do we have these what are the consequences of it what is the purpose of having these kind of environment we are going to discuss that do not worry so the particular developer will run the commands in lower environment and then share the result with the operation team stating that it is working in my environment you need to check what is missing or what is different at your level right so this kind of email keeps on exchanging between developers and operation team now who is actually responsible to fulfill this gap developer is saying that my code is working perfectly fine in my environment where i developed it secondly the particular operation team is saying that when we got this particular code that was not working so in order to mitigate these kind of uh, like gaps we need such a particular person or you can call that a team who has in information or the particular knowledge about development as well as operation team so that is why there is a particular team which is known as devops so this is a combination of developer plus operation guys now when we talk about devops so when an organization is formed let us say when an organization is formed let us say there is going to be a new company very new company we are going to talk about this is being uh, started there is just business idea we are going to talk about let us say we want to sell something online for example like uh, we want to start a company like flipkart like amazon obviously when these companies were started these were not this that much huge as these are as of today right so let us say we have a company uh, known as burger.com there is a company like burger.com right this is our domain now when when we start this organization so what kind of other people will be involved within this any idea yes guys in order to make this particular idea burger.com obviously we are going to set sell burger different type of different price at different level different uh, like geographical area we are going to uh, create our brand name first only then customers will come, would come up so i want to build this organization from scratch so what kind of team and what kind of people support will be required you and you need, you need a developer a tech ops an infrastructure engineer and um also an sre okay yes just give me a moment hello yes guys so the very first thing which we need to understand here is that what kind of teams are required so first of all there will be a team known as let me create let me draw some uh, other kind of these are going to be separate teams here like how is uh, how a company is built so first of all there will be a team known as product team or you can call this team as business team as well because these are the particular group of people who develops new ideas either we call either we call them product or business team because first of all these are the guys who are the founder of this organization why i am telling you see 
although we are supposed to discuss devops only but we need to have a very clear picture like how is an organization driven right so first of all we have a product or business and they have some idea now the very second team which will be required in order to generate this idea into reality right there will be a team which is known as dev obviously guys i am not talking about that we will need some cook we will need some chef or maybe the particular staff who are going to import the particular uh, components which are being used to uh, like make our product right i am just talking about that how this particular journey go in order to sell this particular product online right guys so we will have another another like group of people which are known as developer whatever business ideas these guys have they will turn they will convert that idea into an application or into an website okay so is that website developed in a proper manner or not so let us say whenever we are trying to sell something online so there will be a particular option known as payment people will be allowed to make a payment online manner as well using upi you using neft maybe using some any like any additional uh, component they will be allowed to make payment so what if there is a particular bug or there is a particular flaw using which some hackers might able to generate or maybe uh, maybe able to create fake orders like they are they are booking the particular order they are booking the particular product but they are actually not paying so obviously this will bring some kind of like loss to this particular organization so there will be another set of people who are known as qa or you can call that quality assurance engineer or you can call that test team qa or tester now see guys how this particular flow is going to work first of all product team will share their idea now there will be a particular brainstorming okay let us say developers will say that either we can develop this website on wordpress or we want to develop it on php magento or maybe any other comp, uh, any other platform then after maybe the developer can say okay we are going to use python in order to develop this particular website so any kind of programming language using which they can develop a web interface developers will decide with product team okay we will we will need th these many servers these many components we are going to need in order to develop this kind of application for example what kind of gateways we are going to integrate business team will let them know that we have already had a discussion with xyz payment gateway in, uh, interface and we will integrate in order to enable our customer to do payment in you know, for purchasing the, our, our product right so that kind of discussion will happen so these developers are going to ensure that what technology is going to be fruitful for them in order to make this successful so then after qa is going to ensure that there should be no flow no bug should be there before making that website live so this is going to be qa team now there will be a particular team which is supposed to be there in order to check security of the particular component so security for example the particular libraries which a developer for example we are talking about java so java is one of the most Uh, like used programming language across the world as of today right so security team will check let us say developer has opted java language in order to do development so qa engineer will check the flow in negative and positive manner all the like happy test cases moreover all the age use cases for example we are running a like a commercial platform a like a person is able to make payment even when the person does not has not does not have sufficient amount in his or her bank account so there has to be a check placed in order to make payment that if a person who is trying to make payment should have positive balance in the account only then this should this should go so for example if developer forgot forgot to Uh, place that kind of check during development so qa engineer is going to be responsible to find that bug and to let developer know that fix it only then this will go to production environment okay next is for security now what does that mean security so let us say the developer what kind what kind of software what kind of libraries or uh, the particular program developer has selected in order to do development these have some security vulnerabilities 
Now, guys, what are vulnerabilities? So, vulnerabilities are a very, very non flow or non bugs in the particular base libraries itself. For example, we are like, if you guys are aware of some technical like technology, so there's a particular word known as log4j. So log4j is a particular software being used to generate logs related to Java application, right? So for example, if there is a bug using which if a hacker is able to exploit, exploit means to explore that bug. So the, the hacker will be allowed to take administrator access into your operating system. Right, guys? So in that particular case, what would happen? Just because of that single library being used for development in order to write the logs of your application into your server, then the server may get hacked. So in that particular place, security team or the guys who are looking for the security of the organization, so those guys will be responsible in order to ensure that there should be no bug which we are going to take to production. Okay, now this is about any library. So let us say developer has developed the application in such a way that is accessible over HTTP and HTTPS both protocol. So over here, guys, do you see this application apps.diagrams.net? Is this visible? The highlighted field? Yes. Okay, great. So there is a lock before it. If I open this particular or let me highlight this particular. So there is a particular word written on it, HTTPS. S for secure. Hypertext transfer protocol S means secure. This works on port number 443. So let us say if you see somewhere that this log is not available and if you try to explore this, like connection is secure. So if you try to open this particular, so you will get to know that there's a particular valid certificate available. Like when it is going to go expire, when it was renewed, where from like they have opted the certificate, right? All the details of certificate you can get to know. Like what are the particular uh, like certificate hierarchy? Like, like uh, where from you have uh, like created, like it is valid from uh, like when it was renewed last. So every kind of information you can get here. So security team is going to ensure that a particular website should be running only on HTTPS because this is a secure website. Second thing, when the particular certificate is added into this particular website, so security team is going to ensure that the particular Encryption method. Encryption means the particular program which is being used to encrypt data when it is traveling over internet. Right? So our security team is going to ensure that the all the all the encryption method being used in order to encrypt data while it is traveling or like over the internet are appropriate, are up to date, are of those kind of which are considered to be secure over the internet. Like we should not be using any weak ciphers. So th those algorithms are known as ciphers. C-I-P-H-E-R-S, ciphers, right? So those ciphers should be strong enough in order to be part of our SSL certificate. So guys, this is known as SSL, secure socket layer certificate. This is known as, right? So when we are implementing a certificate, so security team, Okay, QA will check whether application flow is working fine, no bug is there, but security team is going to ensure that whatever component we have added into this particular certificate, these are also up to date, there is no flow. Moreover, when we are asking our users, okay, let us say there is an end user. So when this user will connect to our burger.com website, so this user should be traveling or should be accessing our website onto some TLS version. Now, what is TLS? TLS means transport layer security. There are multiple versions of TLS available like 1.1, 1.2, 1.3. So 1.1 is considered to be very weak or the old uh, like uh, style of accessing data over internet. So as of today, someone is going to ask you that what version of TLS we are using. So that is supposed to be 1.2. We will discuss about this in more detail. But for now, when we are talking about security, so like a couple of things I'm, so I'm just supposed to highlight before you that these are the things which a security tester has to security like tester has to perform before giving sign off. Okay. 
so security team is supposed to be there then after security team we will have another team which is known as devops here is the particular picture where devops comes into place so guys uh, do you have any question so far like why we are discussing all these things yeah uh, we, we should have some infra team right here to maintain servers so i'm coming on to that perfect so there is a particular team which is known as devops i am going to skip this for now because uh, like this is the particular part which we are going to discuss in very detail because like what is the particular role and responsibility uh, the particular component which which are taken care by this particular team so we will discuss this in in detail so obviously we are going to have another team here which is known as there is a particular team known as tech ops now what is the difference between tech ops and dev ops so guys as developers work only on lower environment and what are these lower environments let me just write this down after that we will discuss in detail so first of all it is known as dev environment then after it is known as test then it will be known as uat uat stands for user acceptance test or guys uh, this test is also known as qa environment so we can define this qa slash test then it will be uat user acceptance test environment where this product team will check the requirement okay whatever was required developers to develop that has been developed in a proper manner or not qa will give sign of that yes everything what was expected is working there is no bug there is no flaws so uh, it is fine to take it to production environment then there will be particular environment known as sit so guys sit is known as system integration test what does that mean so this particular team devops is the owner of this particular environment what does that mean that is owner of this environment so before taking any release to production devops team will ensure that the particular code which is going to be deployed here this environment is supposed to be replica of production environment the very next environment which is about to come uh, is going to be prod and pre prod environment so this environment has to be replica of production environment only why is that so let us say just for example i'm typing here we are we are working with uh, let us say php 5.7 this php 5.7 version is used in sit but when we talk about production so let us say uh php 7.2 is being in used here getting getting the difference guys so the development is done on a lower version of software and when it is supposed to run on production so that is higher version of software so this is the responsibility of devops team in order to ensure that same version of software is available across the environment you right guys so these are the scenarios where the, where a developer say that the code is working fine in my environment because that was developed on lower version and because of some requirement or maybe some other stuff production production team has updated the particular version to latest version so that is why whenever we are talking about this kind of stuff so these responsibility are supposed to be taken care by our devops team right guys so now we have sit environment on a system integration test that everything whatever we are planning to take to production environment that should work in proper manner here as well right guys now the very next thing we are going to talk about pre prod like pre production so this will be a particular part of production environment only but only limited number of users from organization will have access to it there will be a separate application created there will be separate url created there will be real transactions taking place getting point guys there will be separate application separate url and separate users created in order to access this this particular application and if any transaction is made here for example you are trying to do some kind of enhancement into your website 
and you want to test it on pre prod so this pre prod will be as as good as prod if you if you are trying to do any testing you if you are trying to do any order so that order will be real order but before making those changes live to all users you want to test it like how the, how is the look and feel of this particular feature which we have made live to all end users so you can deploy that onto some very specific and limited part of your production env environment and access is limited to only certain people who are part of your organization maybe those part those particular users can be part of your product or business team right guys so that is how it works the final part here is that is known as prod let me define that here so you can call that either prod or production so guys these are different environment right now a developer is supposed to work on dev environment the developer is supposed to work on dev environment right qa is supposed to perform stuff on qa and test environment business is supposed to test on uat environment DevOps is supposed to perform their testing on SIT environment in order to ensure software compatibility across the environments. Pre-prod is being used by DevOps because DevOps will deploy the code here, and this business team will perform their activity here in order to say that yes, the things which were expected, which we have tested on this environment, are working as expected. Finally, the production environment. So the end users, the, uh, this particular end user. will access this environment because these are going to be a real customers now once the code is live on the production so this particular team known as tech ops will be taking care of all the issues which are going to be reported on to this environment let us say there is a particular issue so kumar is asking dr in uh, environment also they are right so we will talk about kumar uh, about dr environment but not right now because dr is created only then when we have full fledged uh, production environment running and in, uh, in order to ensure if this particular infra goes down then how dr is invoked we will discuss about that for sure within maybe tomorrow session or maybe if we get time today so we will discuss it for sure today itself so do not worry about dr okay so guys when we are talking about tech ops so guys there is one more team known as sre so guys sre is a particular practice which was initiated or which was like uh, introduced by google right so sre stands for site reliability engineering so guys sre and tech ops these two teams so either you can club those teams or you can make it you can keep it keep them separate that is going to be like based on individual teams requirement so i have been part of those organization where devops tech ops and sre all the three roles were performed by 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 same set of people so devops team was responsible to do deployment devops team was responsible to support production environment if any issue is there in production so to share the rc everything was taken care by devops but when we have a very huge environment let us say we have thousands of servers to support then we we isolate the particular roles and responsibility of these people so tech ops will be responsible to handle production environment sre team is also equal to tech ops but sre team take some additional responsibility of automation into production environment let us say if there is a particular task which is repeated on daily basis multiple times for example we need to copy the logs from production server to such a server where developers also have access so either we are getting multiple request every day so what we can do here is rather than copying those logs manually we can set up some kind of automation script that script will get executed every 15 minutes or maybe every 30 minutes whatever frequency is required so this sre team can write a shell script or may write a particular program to copy logs from different server to such a centralized server where developers have access are we clear with that so although tech tech ops is also not restricted to do automation but majorly tech ops are supposed to provide support on to production environment in order to provide maximum uptime so guys any question so far yeah <clears throat> Have heard about this DevSecOps and platform ops? Uh, is there? 
so platform ops are known as tech ops because right now we are talking about only production environment so you can call that platform ops and when we talk about devsecops okay so let me tell you that particular part as well what is devsecops so when we talk about devsecops so the particular security practices which are supposed to be performed by a different set of people so those particular should be part of devops pipeline now i would not say that security team is going to be like uh, uh, is going to be out of the picture no security team will always remain there but let us say when devops team is going to create a build so they are supposed to create a particular build in such a manner that it should scan the code by some automated tool let us say you can talk about sonar cube right moreover if any library is found which is very well known and that is buggy that contains some bug so that should not make the build successful jenkin pipeline should break the build and should create a jira ticket to developer in order to fix that moreover not only some nexus maybe you can include any other tool as well for example you can talk about there's a tool known as black buck you can involve that particular tool that as soon as it will be deployed onto production environment it is going to scan the particular live traffic for you in order to generate report so that kind of tools you can involve here moreover like there are n number tool which can be part of this particular pipeline before going the, before taking deployment to production right okay someone is asking what does devops team do in qa environment okay so guys q like devops team is going to be helpful in qa environment let us say they have to dip, do the deployment manually onto qa environment so they will write a particular pipeline using which qa will be able to de uh, deploy the particular code onto different environments in automatic manner devops is not going to help qa in any manner apart from making environment stable and deployment in automatic manner let us say we have okay when we will discuss about git going forward so there we will discuss different branching strategy so devops can help qa in such a manner let us say whenever developer is going to push a particular code to the qa branch so jenkin job will get triggered automatically and that will be deployed onto a specific server and a notification will be sent to tester that new code has been made available onto this particular server please test these kind of functionalities or whatever message we want to display to qa so that kind of help devops can put on the table of testers okay so guys this is all about uh, devops tech ops and sre so guys devops is not a tool or devops is not a, a kind of uh, like team devops is a group of different practices which are put together so guys let us say if we have devops in place like dev plus operation we have so this particular team will not be able to say this is a task of developer for example developer has done the development tech ops team is ready to support in production but whose responsibility is in order to push the code from source code repository to production environment so guys this is going to be devops team let us say during the particular uh, build process the particular build gets failed that is not successful so right now devops will not be able to say this is a particular issue from developer and reason being because there is a particular word written known as dev here within the profile so which means dev team is not supposed to do development is not supposed to write code is not supposed to fix if there is any bug or if any issue if any vulnerability is there in the code dev ops team is not supposed to fix that but dev ops team is supposed to debug or is supposed to help developers identify okay this can be a particular area where issue may be there so you can look into this moreover let us say if operation team says that logs are not getting printed once we are running the application into production environment so we are not able to see the logs so devops team because of like ops part is there so this because of this operation part devops team will help tech ops in order to ensure that logs are getting printed in proper manner there could be a problem 
that the particular file where service is trying to write the logs is owned by some different user or earlier maybe the particular service was running as root user or right now when we are, when tech ops team is trying to start the service so they might have unknowingly selected some different user in order to start the service right so that kind of things are there so devops is responsible to provide helping hand to developers to dev team as well as to operation team i hope we are clear so far guys or do you have any other question because going forward we are going to discuss about couple of other team then after we will discuss uh, about devops in detail any questions guys guys any question no great okay so guys there are a couple of other teams as well which are part of organization let us say it is going to be risk and audit risk and audit team is there like let us say that sre team is saying everything is working fine tech ops team says that we are the best class in the world dev ops team says that we are following all the best practices so these guys are going to be responsible to uh, to check or to recheck the work of each and every one product team says that whenever we are onboarding a new vendor onto platform we do a proper sign off we do a particular like uh, exit and uh, like onboarding pre check right so this risk and audit team is going to be there moreover there will be a particular additional team which is known as governance team is going to be there governance team is going to ensure that what kind of vendor can be onboarded what kind of companies can be made partner that kind of thing so these this particular is going to have control over all the stuff governance team is going to be responsible in order to uh, like ensure that whatever kind of task we are performing everything is documented no one is bypassing the particular process governance team, governance team is going to be there now two more teams are there when everything is set up obviously like prior to all these we may or like whenever you want you can add these two teams say like sales and marketing so guys sales and marketing are two teams which are which plays very very important role in order to, like in order to make any organization successful because unless there will be marketing and based on that marketing sales is taking place so obviously the rest of teams are not going to be useful so guys i hope that i make this particular picture clear that how does an organization how is an organization built and how does that operate are we clear naresh mallikarjun pranjali raju ramesh sre team is another name of your tech ops including some uh, okay josh is asking what does the sre team do so the answer here is that sre team is just like your tech ops but this team is going to on some additional responsibility they can automate couple of other things unlike tech ops feels that this is not our job to to automate things so if they want they can also automate there is no restriction but yes Based on the skill set, SRE engineers are hired. Okay, guys. So now let's talk about DevOps. So, guys, when we talk about DevOps, what other roles are there? so guys we need to understand this part as well whenever we are we are preparing for a particular job we should be knowing in advance that what kind of jo job roles can be offered to us so the very first one here is that is known as linux admin a person or an organization does not want to hire directly as devops engineer because ideally devops engineers are a very vast role because they are not in position to say no for anything 
like the very first rule when you are planning to be part of devops team so a particular team may hire you as linux admin and they would want you to work upon very limited set of tools let us say they would want you to work on linux they would want you to work on jenkins maybe ansible maybe they may want you to work on git which is which is known as source like source uh, source source code source code management tool scm or maybe version control system you can call that so as a linux admin second thing when you are going to work they may ask you they may want you to hire a server admin if you are a beginner then i'm talking about that this is a particular ladder which you may follow in order to become a devops obviously couple of the, couple of companies are there which are hiring a fresher as devops engineer directly because they know that the skill set which a person has and the particular team which is currently working for them so with the collaboration of both a person may be converted as devops engineer so devops engineer has to know a lot of tools a devops engineer is not in position to say no if there is any tool or technology being used in the organization devops person has to support that okay third is known as every single person who is going to work in the organization guys the person is supposed to know like network so a person may want to hire you as network administrator reason, reason being whether you are working as devops tech ops sre developer security so guys we all are supposed to know at least basics of the network right guys then after when you have gone through all this profile so there is a particular profile uh, which is available as of today that is known as cloud admin or cloud engineer right guys then after next profile will be automation engineer next there will be a profile which is known as tech ops l1 or 2 or 3 or 4 tech ops l1 l2 l3 and l4 these are the profile which may be offered to you then after there will be profile as devops so guys let us let us see like how does that work if you have only knowledge of linux you will be offered a role of linux administ administrator for example you know net like linux plus network then you may be offered a role of server administrator if you know cloud and along with all these uh, like uh, information which are displayed uh, like on the top like linux server network then you may be offered a particular role of cloud engineer or cloud administrator when you know all these three now a person now an organization is looking for that all the task which is being performed by these administrators on daily basis and obviously like these are going to be repetitive tasks so we want to have a person who has understanding of all these things like how do these things work along with a particular programming language it could be python it could be ansible it could be terraform it could be a cloud formation template so if a person is aware of that thing as well then a person will be given a designation of automation engineer right then after in order to pro like uh, to take support on production environment there will be a position known as tech ops engineer finally when a particular person has understanding of each and everything whatever is mentioned on the top so that particular person will be given a position of devops any question so far guys guys any question so far no sir clear okay great now in order to become devops what kind of tools and technology you should be knowing about the final thing which we are going to discuss today is that if you really want to become a devops what kind of tools and technology you should be knowing about okay so guys the very first thing which a person should know who is planning to become a devops so guys that is going to be linux a person should be knowing linux at least then after person should be knowing network part at least i do not say that a person should be very expert at uh, like configuring network devices and all 
but a person should be uh, able to understand network okay so someone asked or oh, that only from listed position a person can become devops no it is not required a person who is coming from developer background has understanding of linux operating system and, and other tools a person can become become devops so either a person like working from operation side can become devops because these are the profiles uh, which are well known as operation profiles so the same way goes for those who are working as developers right now and they want to become devops so they will have to learn for example a person who is working as linux admin will have to learn automation tool development tool in order to automate things and a person who is coming from dev environment so like development the person already knows so the person will have to understand network cloud and like linux part in order to become devops because devops is such a team which cannot say no to anything so after network a person is supposed to know obviously i will not include cloud here because it is not required or it is not mandatory to no dev no cloud to become devops if you know that is always going to be a plus but those organization which are not running into cloud even those are using devops methodology so now the very first tool which is where uh, which is supposed to be known is git 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 right this is known as scm source code management tool or you can call that vcs version control system so if you want i can write it down here that that is known as scm source code management or vcs scm like source code management or vcs means version control system so that is completely up to you like how do you want to interpret it then after okay let me remove it because i have already explained so first is going to be git then after it is going to be jenkins after gen so guys what is the role of gen devops engineer what is the expectation of uh, like uh, expectation from gen like devops engineer during interview okay what is git what is the particular what do you do on git what are the roles and responsibility you perform as git administrator or as devops engineer what what are your roles and responsibility related to git so what will you be saying let us say in order to provision access to create new repositories to do uar user access review that who has what kind of access when user was created whether whether the particular uh, user is meeting compliance requirement or not if a user has not accessed any tool let us say it is git bitbucket jira maybe confluence maybe any other tool which is shared across the organization so the users account should become inactive so that kind of activities are performed by devops team in order to ensure that no inactive user is having access onto these tools we will discuss about these roles and responsibility again in detail then after when we are talking to jenkins so let us say how to integrate jenkins with git how to ensure that if a developer is going to commit anything here so jenkins job should be automatically triggered what kind of protocol we are going to use can we replace jenkins with github actions yes definitely we can replace but not 100% cases okay so uh, jenkins will be there then after we are going to talk about docker container so guys first of all docker is necessary to know only then after we can talk about kubernetes then after docker docker is necessary then after ansible so we will discuss about ansible here then after ansible so guys git is source code management tool jenkins is used for deployment for build and release process docker is used for containerization purpose ansible is used for configuration management and the recent module of ansible allows us to do automation as well like we can build and enter stack with the help of ansible right then after we are supposed to know being devops we are supposed to know at least one web server which is known as apache or nginx like anyone so we will discuss about apache here within this particular session so like or maybe whatever will be needed we can discuss that then after we will discuss about at least one database which is my sql because a particular person who is going to work as devops engineer should be knowing like how to install software then after if software is installed how to configure that in high availability mode 
high availability zone we are going to discuss about then after if we talk about like uh, what other tools we are going to discuss so definitely guys we are going to talk about prometheus for monitoring prometheus plus grafana we will discuss about monitoring section here like how to how to enable monitoring what 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 if there is a particular new service going to be deployed what set of tools we can use for monitoring what kind of parameters do we need to monitor how to set alert for this who decides these kind of alert threshold that sort of thing should be known to a devops engineer before going for facing an interview on the devops profile then after we will discuss about elk elastic search log stash and kibana these tools we are going to discuss yes two more top demanding tools are there which will which are supposed to be discussed here but that will be based on demand like if people know the basics then i will teach otherwise i will skip so these are terraform and eks sorry k8s kubernetes which is known as so these particular tool these particular two tools i will be discussing only in that case if people have basic understanding of these tools i hope i make myself clear because see guys this particular session is going to be for interview preparation and what does that mean so at least basic knowledge let us say if i'm talking about branching strategy just for example if i'm talking about branching strategy so if i'm going to talk about the industry standard about git branching strategy so a person should be at least able to understand okay what are branch in git let us i'm talking about that master slave replication in jenkins so a person should be able to understand okay what is a job what are the different kind of jobs can we create on the top of jenkins let us simply if i'm talking about plugins so a person should be able to understand like how to install and remove plugins from jenkins when i'm talking about the best practices to be followed inside docker container while writing docker file so best practices i will be telling about but at least a person should be able to understand okay what are the basic parameters of docker file how to expose a port inside docker file uh, what is base image what is from what is import what is like maintainer what are the these basic parameters let us say when i'm talking about like best practice of ansible so a person should be able to understand okay like we have templates we have rules uh we have uh, files that that kind of things a person should be knowing same thing goes with like uh, we will talk about apache we will talk about mysql we will talk about prometheus we will talk about alk and obviously when we are talking about this so guys as complementary we obviously we are obviously going to discuss about basics of cloud because until and unless a person knows basics of cloud so that will not be possible like it will be really hard for you to crack the interview so we are going to add aws as well mandatory not complete aws we are going to discuss but yes first of all we will discuss about linux major topics like it is going to be user management disk management file permission pack or maybe like uh, file permission kind of stuff server performance monitoring we are going to discuss most frequently executed commands most frequently asked question on the top of linux we are going to discuss for sure then after we will talk about aws so uh, the very basic services and which are majorly like used in any organization like it is going to be ec2 ebs auto scaling load balancing we are going to discuss vpc route 53 iam s3 these kind of services for sure we are going to discuss we are going to cover as part of this particular interview preparation then network so we are not going to uh, we are not going to cover a lot we are not going to cover a lot on the top of network but yes like what are the ne what what is network what is ipv4 what are different classes of ipv address for what is public what is private network what are the different private uh, like series of ip address that kind of things for sure we are going to discuss because no one is going to ask you beyond that during interview because as of today no one is going to ask you the mode of switch the mode of router like what is config mode right and uh, what are like uh, edit mode like different modes are there so no one is going to ask you about that because we do not get a chance to work on real physical devices but at least basic understanding we should have same thing with git we will discuss in detail jenkins docker ansible so these kind of things we are going to discuss and okay so 
couple of guys are asking that please include uh, terraform and k8 as so guys as committed so if you have basic knowledge of it so definitely i will touch base upon it now it is your time to ask if you have any question yeah look in the uh, uh, i mean uh, do you continue with all the uh, setup lab enable like uh, or only a three part so this will be like uh, 30 to 40 percent uh, like lab and 60 to 60 percent uh, like theory class reason being because during interview only your concepts are checked wherever it is required to let us say when i'm i'm, I'm going to talk about jenkins obviously i will install jenkins i shall be able to explain components only then when jenkins is installed when i'm talk, going to talk about git so obviously i'll be using github when I'm going to talk about Ansible, so obviously I'll be executing a couple of playbooks, right? When I'm going to explain Apache, I will install and I will uh, I will explain the options. The same thing, same thing with go with like MySQL with Prometheus, ELK, and Grafana. So I shall not be setting up end-to-end -end labs, but whenever I will explain any individual components and how it can be integrated with others, I will install and then I will tell you. So, for example, like if you have to discuss about Kubernetes, we can take example of EKS, Elastic Kubernetes Services, which is provided from the side of AWS. Okay. Right? Yeah. So, that is the way we can uh, like uh, complete, complete all these things. But, uh, Kumar, as you know, like most of things are going to be theoretical based when we are going to face interview, right? Yeah, uh, yeah, but some interviews are asking shell scripting to write and the Jenkins uh, pipelines to write. So at least that 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 part, like how to write it. So that much part I will cover. But practice, you guys will have to do for sure. Yeah, yeah sure. Thank you. So when we call it interview preparation, so like we like uh, it is understood that uh, Python or shell script, I can guide you where to where, where to study from. But I shall not uh, be covering this particular part within this. Because see, I can tell you the particular logics, like what do they ask, but I cannot tell you the exact cell script which is required there. Yes. So obviously, I know the expectation of a person, like what do they ask or ask or like onto all these tech tools and technology, but about Python. So let us say like I'm asking some different script to write, they may ask them different. I can tell you the particular place where to study from, where to, where to prepare from. Sure, sure, sure. Thank you. Okay. So now, guys, one more thing I would like to discuss here that uh, we have discussed within this particular platform that what are the kind of different environments here based on the particular utilization. So it can be utilized as dev environment. It can be utilized as QA or test environment about UAT, SIT, pre-prod and production. So, guys, there are some other ways as well using which we can define the set of network. So the like based on network, how do we isolate the environments? Based on network, how do we isolate environments? So the very first environment is known as DMZ. This is known as guys demilitarized zone. Now, what kind of services are kept here? So every individual service where we have public IP address associated or which is going to be responsible to accept the traffic from end user directly. Let us say all your public facing firewall, all your public facing load balancer, all your public facing web servers are placed inside this particular zone, which is known as DMZ. This is known as demilitarized zone. And guys, this is the zone which is supposed to be mostly secured. The most limited open fire, like with a very limited ports which are open on firewall are on this particular zone. And let us say we are not supposed to allow port 22 for all for open word. Let us say port 80 and port 443 should be only opened onto this. We should not allow port number 25 of any server onto this particular firewall, right? So DMZ means demilitarized zone where the particular servers like web server, public facing load balancer, firewalls are kept. This is known as demilitarized zone. This segregation is based on network. Uh, so if you want, I can define that here. 
based on network right so it is going to be dmz second one is going to prod so guys what is prod so prod zone is known as a second zone this is considered to be very safe zone here reason being we do not listen to me very carefully guys we do not allow any kind of public ip address into prod zone you can consider if public and private both ip addresses are associated with a server so that should be kept in dmz zone or that should that that has been kept here by mistake prod zone should not have public ip address associated if you have associated public ip address with any server which is in prod zone so it means that should be considered as dmz now because as per network topology we are not supposed to have public ip address into prod zone now what kind of servers are kept here so maybe your database application middleware application your uh, multiple uh, multiple servers like it could be your nginx it could be your java, your java application it could be your, uh, your redis your elastic search your monitoring engine every kind of tool can be placed here right guys and third thing third thing is known as tnd test and development so over here we may have public and private both ip address associated with a single server or we may not have associated both ip we may have only private ip address with a server but guys keep this thing in mind this particular tnd servers are not supposed to have any kind of connectivity with these two zones reason being if we enable connectivity from tnd to person and dmz zone which means these all are able to uh, like transfer data from one another let us say if your tnd environment is hacked by any hacker maybe uh, like because of some bug or maybe like hacker has some kind of potential threat so in that particular case what is going to happen guys this particular will be breached in that particular so these are supposed to be isolated in that particular manner then after the final uh, stuff here which we would like to discuss is based on servers or you can call that based on infra so guys there there are once again going to be three kind of different uh, stuff first of all it is going to be physical server physical server or you can call that host it could be physical host or physical server second thing it is going to be virtual machines virtual servers or machines then after it will be known as containers so guys let us not call it docker or maybe kubernetes let us call it containerized environment so guys i hope that we are clear with this like how do we isolate network based on like utilization let me define here based on utilization right guys so i hope that if someone is going to ask and guys keep one more thing in mind do not ever say that you work only on like dev qa uat sit in pre prod environment you do not work on production environment and why is that so okay the question here is no public ip will be associated with prod and database servers they will have only private ips best and most comes into picture so uh, oh, okay so over here grace so just to answer your statement here we will discuss about it in detail but let me tell you whenever we are planning to have a particular server which is known as dmz that will be created inside dmz zone because either sometime we may have to log into that bastion host with the help of vpn tunnel or if that vpn tunnel does not work so we may we may be need to log into that server with the help of public ip address and from there we uh, log into these servers so yes your bastion host or you can call that jump server should be created inside dmz zone only we will discuss about that in detail do not worry okay so i hope that i am uh, that these particular things are clear so far any questions guys guys any questions uh in the
uh, we have a cloud servers as well. Uh, come again, I lost in between. Yeah, and based on infra, we can have uh, the cloud servers, uh, public cloud servers. Yes, we can have, but whenever you are going to have public cloud servers, so the same thing will be there. So either you will have to create a particular like uh, DMZ zone there where your public servers will be allocated. You will have to create a, like another zone where your private servers will be located or your prod zone will be there and TND will be there. So as of today, AWS allows you to have your physical host inside AWS data center. Uh, you can create your EC2 machines there. If you're talking about uh, AWS and you can create like e either EKS or like either, either Kubernetes for your containerization. Like the particular disturb which I've mentioned here, this is going to be universal wherever you apply this. You will have to set up dev environment in, in, in cloud environment as well, QA test, UAT, SIT, pre-prod and production. You will have to like uh, uh, isolate your network based on networking, based on network, like based on your, uh, what do I call DMZ network and TND. And after that, you will have to isolate it based on your your physical server. It is going to be virtual machine or containers. So wherever you go, you will find this kind of architecture everywhere. Kumar, I hope uh, we are clear on this. Yeah, clear, clear. Thank you. Yeah, great. So I hope, guys, we are good so far. Do you have any other question? Okay, there is a question. People working from different domain, how to demonstrate their work profile close to this skill set? Okay. So guys, when I will be explaining, so what do we need to do in order to gain experience? Either work for a long time in order to prove you are experienced or just start learning from such a person who has been working for a long time. So guys, I'm not only going to teach you over here, but I'll be sharing my experience. Based on my experience, you will learn the roles and responsibility and the particular tasks which are supposed to be executed on day to day. So the timing will be 8 a.m. to 9.30 a.m. So as we started today at 8 a.m., same time we will start the class. And as it is 9.14, so we will end up the classes by 9.30. Like after 15 minutes from now. These are going to be Monday to Friday. Uh, and if... Yeah, Monday to Friday, these are going to be. No, how long it will take? But it totally. will take uh, it will take uh, one calendar month. So you can say like, uh, like within first week of March, it will be completed. Okay. Yes. So guys, now I'm going to stop recording of this particular session.